Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to speak briefly uh, on some current events, uh, specifically uh, this meeting that the World Economic Forum is having uh, over in Davos, Switzerland uh, at the moment. You know, and, and as you can imagine, you know, they're speaking, speaking on conjuring up all matters of wickedness. And ultimately, they're puffed up in pride, you know, because they feel like they're in the position, you know, where now they can pretty much seize control and ultimately, uh, you know, steal the birthright, you know, from Jacob, which consists of us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, these devils uh, unknowingly... <clears throat> As they, you know, pursue, you know, their fourth industrial revolution, uh, they're going to bring on their, their own destruction, pursuing the biblical prophecy. You know, because as it's written in Romans 9, you know, Yahweh raised up Pharaoh, you know, just to bring him down. And Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, being the modern day Pharaoh, the same exact thing is occurring. You know, this devil's puffed up in pride, he's... You know, taking technology to a whole nother level is his so-called science. And now he's in he's in the mindset where he thinks he can just do away, you know, with the God of the Bible, who you people ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ. The true names being Yahweh, which means he is, he exists, he's omnipotent. You see? Bahashem means in the name, and Yahweh Shai means he delivers. He's the deliverer. Yah means he Hawashai means deliverer. Okay, and these these Edomites, all right, and the rest of these heathen have gotten to a point, you know, where they think, you know, they're gonna take over. So starting with Esau Edom. You see, Esau Edom is in the mindset where he thinks he's gonna he's gonna be able to just pretty much steal the birthright from Jacob, which consists of us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, because this is what this thing is all about. Okay, this fourth industrial revolution. Okay, this this whole build back better. You know, new world order. This is all about taking the birthright back. Okay, because they understand um, <laughs> Jacob got next pursuing the biblical prophecy. You know, and uh, whether they understand or not, they're pretty much conjuring up their end as they pursue. Uh, this fourth industrial revolution. You know, as they move closer to, you know, their quote unquote new world order, that's going to bring on their destruction pursuing the biblical prophecy. And ultimately, you know, there's a video that I actually have from Dabu 7, two actually, going into how, you know, well, matter of fact, I'll just play them. You know, I'll just play him. But, you know, these devils are taking are taking counsel and they're conjuring up all forms of plans to try and do away, you know, with Jake, man. You see? And you are, you other people are just collateral damage, you know, because their target is Jake. You see? So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, the first scripture I want to get real quick is the book of Sirach. The book of Ecclesiastic is also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 22. And it reads, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, neither at any time the counsel of sinners, prudence. You see, and these devils are taking counsel, 
you know, planning and plotting on how they can lower the population and pretty much take over the world, man, and, and, and uh, create a uh, synthetic uh, immortality, you know, by linking man with machine. You know, these devils are already making fake meats and fake fruits and just buying all the farmland just in efforts to fulfill their fantasy, man, their diabolical fantasy. You know, but ultimately, Scripture goes into how there's no counsel against the Lord. You know, so these damn devils are going to find themselves in a the predicament they didn't expect to be in. You know, because they're going to fail ultimately because there's a sword. Okay, there's, there's a sword in the form of these missiles. Okay, that's promised to come down upon Idumia, man. <laughs> you see, and that's, gonna, and that's the head. Idumia, right? These Edomites, they're the head of the heathen. So when when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai takes these devils out, that's the end of the that's the end of the heathen, man. You see? The natural Gentiles, they're out of there at that point. You see? So through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, let's grab this clip real quick. Let's grab this one real quick. Insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID 19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. And that and that's the first video. And that was from five days ago. Now there's another one from Dabu, right? And this is literally hours ago. Uh, Global Security Outlook uh, Report 2023. This is the result of uh, research in collaboration with the forum's communities and our partner Accenture, which we've uh, interviewed and sought input from over 300 executives globally. The most striking finding that we found is that 93% of cyber leaders and 86% of cyber business leaders believe that the geopolitical instability makes a catastrophic cyber event likely in the next two years. And they now he said catastrophic. You see? Catastrophic global cyber attack. Now let's get that word catastrophic real quick. Catastrophic. Catastrophic, right? Right, involving or causing sudden great damage or suffering. Right? Extremely unfortunate or unsuccessful. Some similar words. Disastrous. Right? Tragic. Fatal. Fatal. See? Awful. Terrible. Now, we understand, right? That a, that a, uh, a cyber attack can knock out the grid, man. And if this thing's going to be a catastrophic cyber attack, I mean, you, you, you can imagine the grid's going to go down. And if the grid goes down, we're talking global, we're talking blackouts, okay? No electricity. Meaning what? Food's going to go bad. Meaning what? Famine. You see? Hey, Jacob's trouble's right around the corner. You see? And then this is what they're playing. He said in the next two years, it's, high, it's likely, it's highly likely. You see? Because what are they going to do? They're going to use, or they're going to use, create, they're going to create chaos, they're going to operate under order out of chaos. That's how they've always operated. You see? And this is what they're talking about in uh, Davos, Switzerland. Let's get this real quick. Right, Davos, right? A town in Switzerland where the World Economic Forum is usually held every year. <laughs> you see? And when you get this word Davos, right? And now the, the beloved elder Yashawamba brought this out in his lesson, right? It's heavy information, right? It goes into what? Davos comes from the popular name David. 
It means son of David and beloved. You see, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds of that? That's why they're holding this World Economic Forum. You see? Because these devils are in, they're, 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 they're striving against the Lord, man. They think, they think they're going to undermine Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and somehow, some way, get the birthright back. No. It's not going to work out for you. You're not beloved. And when you go into beloved in the scriptures, that's the elect. You see? <laughs> hey, so this man, hey, this man's trying his damn hardest, man. See? Let's get some more information out of here, right? The WEF, right? is a meeting for discussions between businesses. So like, yeah, between business people, economists, politicians, etc. Right, the elite. And you can only imagine what they're discussing. You see? <laughs> they're discussing how to take over the world, man. Full control. See? See? And they're trying to hide their uh, counsel, which is, which is, hey, the scripture goes into that. What's it say in Isaiah 29? Let's get it real quick. Woe to you that try to hide your counsel from the Lord, man. And this is exactly what they're doing. You see the book of Isaiah chapter 29. In verse 15, it reads, woe unto them that seek deep. To hide their counsel from the Lord. Right. They didn't allow any private um, media. In this in this uh, at this meeting. You see, it was all uh, commercial based media. You know, so they're able to cover things up and show what they want. Nothing leaks out. You see, and their works are in the dark and they say who seeth us. You see? And who knoweth us? And this is going into who? The elite, man. Okay? And even our beloved King David. There's a Psalm of David. What's that? Psalm 64? Let me get this real quick. Going into this secret council. That he was asking to be hid from, man. Giving credence that we need to be hid from these damn devils as well. In the days to come. Hey, because they're going to come down with great wrath, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to allow this man to, to, to come down with great wrath for, for a period of time. And this is what we're trying to tell you, Jake, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You see, we're trying to tell you that this man is going to come down with great wrath, man. You see, and to repent. You know, but only, only one-third is going to hearken. We understand that. Two-thirds of you are not going to listen. You're going to keep pulling away at the shoulder. Right? You're going to keep thinking that this is not going to happen in your lifetime. And it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. Right? Let's get this from the top. The point is in um, verse 5. But I'm going to start from the top. This is a beautiful psalm. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, and verse 1. And it reads, Hear my voice, O Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. So here it is. Our beloved King David. Mighty warrior, prophet, understood he had enemies, man, that he needed to be preserved, preserved from. And I, I say that to say this. You, Jake, think you don't have enemies, man. You have enemies, Jake. You better read Psalms, the 83rd chapter. We're not in biblical times no more. That, that, that's a, that book is, that, that, that book is, uh, that book don't mean nothing. Hey, look around you. Who's putting you down? Like like uh, like like you ain't like you ain't shit. Who's laying you even with the ground, man? Your enemies, man. Starting with evil E. Run the numbers on it. Of how many so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans get laid out by cops, man, and specifically Edomite cops. You see? Look into that. Right? Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. See, and that secret counsel of the wicked are these elites. You see, this is going into these Bilderberg meetings, these World Economic uh, Forum meetings, right? These summit meetings. You see? 
Yeah, uh, King David prophesied about the elite, man. Right? From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Even bitter words, man. And they do this through what? Through their media, through their celebrity machine, right? Through their uh, the, the, the different devices they have, such as, you know, their um, their law enforcement, right? A lot, mainly their media, though. You say they use their media to, you know, produce a narrative, you know, like their smear campaign, uh, as far as calling us domestic terrorists, they're using their t their media to do that, right? Their news outlets, you see, to create narratives. Media goes into what medium, which goes into witchcraft. You see, through their media, they can they can they can uh, um, you know put enchantment on people by the masses. You see, they wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. You see, and who's the perfect? The Israelites, man. Starting with the elect. No, we're not. And it's the hopeful, the hopeful elect. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. You see? And the hopeful elect is not perfect in the sense of this flesh. But in the, through the spirit, the hopeful elect is perfect. You see? Why? Because we do things to please our power. See, we believe in our power. We have faith, which is a gift. You see? And that's what makes us, and that's what makes you righteous, man. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. Lord willing, we are the elect, Akiyam and Akwa. Right? Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Right? See, yeah, because they don't, they don't fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai yet. You see? <laughs> yet, but pursuing the Sirach 36. They're going to know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, how we know him when he lays this judgment down on them. They're just being, they're just being reserved right now, pursuing the Job, the 21st chapter. You see, they're being reserved for the day of destruction. Contrary to popular belief, this is why this damn devil hasn't been touched yet for everything he's done since Cain, man. But he's going to have to pay for all that righteous blood, man. He's going to have to pay for all that. Right then, and here's the point. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune in laying snares, which is a trap. Privily, they say, Salakia, they commune in, they commune of laying snares privily, right? Privately, right? They say, who shall see them? You see? Just like in uh, Isaiah 29, <laughs> right? Who shall see them? But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai sees you devils, man. Pursuing the Sirach, the 23rd chapter. The, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Let's go get that before we go back to Isaiah. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai sees you. You're not hiding anything from the Lord and his angels, man. Is that 19? Khan. The book of Ecclesiastic is also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 23 and verse 19. And it reads, Such a man only fareth the eyes of men. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, see, all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. So your little secret counsels you're having, hey, they're being eavesdropped on. <laughs> and then through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, the Rakak Wadash, hey, the men of the Lord are able to expound on what you're really going into, man. See? And we filter it through the scriptures. And this is going to be part of that rage that you're going to have, man. You see? Let's go back to Isaiah 29. Let's go back to Isaiah 29. In verse 16, let me get this. The, verse, uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 16 that reads, Surely... Your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, man. Right. Woe to you that call good evil and evil good. You're going to be visited for that. Okay. Setting 
uh, alphabet alphabet people over uh over uh norm no I must say normal people man you see heterosexual people man okay you've placed a uh a, a, a trans a transformer uh, uh, uh above society man a transformer has more rights than everybody you see it's not okay it's now becoming a, a, a norm you know to be a kid lover man Hey, this man has called evil good and good evil. He's put the woman over the man. This man is allowing all men of wickedness to go forth. See, he's turned things upside down. But hey, like it says, he's going to be esteemed as the pot is clay. You see, for, sh for show the work say of him. That made it, he made me not, or show the thing framed, say of him that framed it, he had no understanding, right? And this is what Esau, he does this through, he shows us through his actions, this is what he feels, and this is how he thinks. This man thinks he can do whatever the Lord can do, he thinks he can do it better. You see, this is why this man is on a campaign to change your, your DNA, man. You see, to change your, your your genetic makeup. Okay, this man is in the process of uh, making synthetic babies, man. Synthetic people. See, this is him saying, hey, whatever you can do, I can do better. This damn devil thinks he out, outwitted Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Unknowing, right? Like again, we quoted earlier that Romans, let's go get it. That Romans 9. Right? Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, and evil E, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, is the modern day Pharaoh. Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared. Throughout all the earth. And remember, scripture says, what's that? Jeremiah 16, pursuing to the deliverance, right, of Israel, that second exodus. No longer will it be said that the Lord liveth, that delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. You see? But he's going to be remembered as delivering the children of Israel out of the land of the north, which is Babylon the Great, right? And it's going to come by means of great destruction. You can read about it in Revelations, the 11th chapter. Okay, when them 10 cities fall, man, when the 10th part of the city falls, man, you see, I saw about Babylon the Great, them 10 FEMA zones falling. How? By those ICBM missiles, man, by, the, by, the, by means of World War III. You see? <laughs> the weapons of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai's indignation. This is what this man has to look forward to. Let's jump down real quick. This is this place is gonna be a memorial. Let's go down. Right, let's jump down to verse 22, right? What of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endure with much long suffering? And that's what you people forgot. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is long suffering. See? He's long suffering, but when that judgment comes, you better believe it's going to come a hundredfold. Let's read this again from the top. Book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 22, and it reads, What if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with long, with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, right? Those vessels of those vessels of wrath is who? That, that cursed people, okay? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, okay? The vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. That's him. <laughs> you see? The house of Yah, the curse of Yah. Matter of fact, let's get this real quick. Let me just get it. The book of Proverbs, what's that, 3 and 33?
right? The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 33, and it reads, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but, the, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Who's the house of the wicked? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. We can prove it. Let's just prove it. Book of Malachi, chapter 1, right? Verse 4 is the point, but let's start from the top. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Right? And this is how Jake feels. Why? Because we've been, we went through the mill. We've been, we've been put through all forms of uh, evil, man. Scripture says that the Lord wounded us with a wound of an enemy. See, but the majority of you, Jake, don't understand the reason why this happened is because we sinned against the Lord. And we have to bear his indignation pursuant to, let me just get this real quick just to make this point. We're going to jump right back. Micah 7 and 9, right? I will bear the indignation, which is righteous anger, of the Lord because I have sinned against him. We sinned against the Lord. We broke the everlasting covenant of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Therefore, we were scattered throughout all four corners of the earth. We were discontinued from our heritage and we were placed underneath the feet of the heathen, man. We were set at the bottom of the bottom and there's nothing under us till this day. But the beautiful thing about it is deliverance is coming. We're at the end of this thing. We're at the end of our captivity. You see? Until he plead my cause, see, there's going to come a time where Yahweh Mashiach is going to plead our cause, man. This, this, this captivity we're in, we're, in, we're in is not forever. But the thing is, evil E, with his diabolical plan in the form of him trying to steal back the birthright and create his synthetic immortality, he wants to keep us perpetual slaves. But it's not going to happen. Nahum 1 and 9. Go read that. Right? And execute judgment for me. <clears throat> he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness, man. And we're coming into that time. We're coming into that time, right? Back in the book of Malachi chapter 1, right? In verse 2 again. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau. See? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh hates Esau. Who's Esau? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay? And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And this is going to happen. America is going to be laid waste. Okay? Scripture says only the screech owl and desert creatures are going to dwell here after Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai wreaks havoc on this landmass for the controversy of Zion. You see? And for his name's sake. See? He's going to recompense these devils. For everything that they have done. And we believe that wholeheartedly, man. We believe that, hey, Yahweh Bashim al put us in captivity. And it's written. Oh, though, hey, that recompense is also written. We believe that's coming as well. It, it would only make sense. Right? Let's continue on. Whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate pla places. Right? And they did that throughout the time of the Renaissance period. Okay? Western Rome went down, right? These devils came back. Oh, well, there was a, a period of a thousand years <clears throat> throughout the time of the uh, uh, the Byzantine Empire. They also call it the Dark Ages, right? This this damn devil was uh he was he was bound up, man. He was in the pit. He was he was under subjection to Jake, right? And after a thousand years, this man was led out of the pit. See, and was allowed to deceive the nations. Revelations. Go read that. Right? In the Renaissance period, what's Renaissance mean? Rebirth. Okay? And this man continued his, his, uh, his diabolical mindset upon the planet Earth, man. And started thrusting evil throughout the Earth once again. You see? But guess what? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. You see? And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation for 
forever. You see? They're called the border of wickedness, man. Evil E is the wicked. Okay? He is the wicked. He's, he's cursed, man. And he's been cursed since Cain. See, Esau stems from that wicked seed of Cain. Matter of fact, let's jump to Genesis, the fourth chapter, real quick to make this point. The book of Genesis, chapter four. Right? When he killed, when Cain killed his brother, right? After he killed his brother out of jealousy, strife, and envy, right? Because his, his sacrifice wasn't worthy. He gave him a, he gave the Lord a sacrifice of the land and didn't give him a proper sacrifice, right? He killed his brother, Jake, um, Abel. And, and after he killed him, what did, um, let me get this real quick. All right, the book of Genesis chapter four and verse 11, I'm going to go straight to the point. And now art thou cursed from the earth. See, matter of fact, let me see. Let me, let me, let me read up a little bit for edification. Let me, let me start at, just start at eight, right? And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He killed him. All right. This is the first documented murder. Okay. The first documented murder is right here with Cain. And what you're going to find out is Cain is that wicked seed that Esau stemmed out of. Okay. Now, let's continue on. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Wicked nigger. He killed him, hid the body, you know that, and talking about, he, am, I my, am, I, am I my brother's keeper? Hey, you're supposed to be. You're supposed to have your brother's back, aren't you? Let's continue on. And he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. What did we read in Proverbs 3 and 33? The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, man. Right? Let's continue on. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. You see? This, man, this man's been cursed. This man's been cursed since Cain, man. And remember, Cain got hit with the mock, right? Which was, which was leprosy. His pigmentation was taken from him. And when you read Genesis, the 25th chapter, when Esau was born, well, he was what? He was red all over, man. He was lacking pigment. You see? Genesis 27, he was blessed with the sword, which is a killing instrument. And he's been doing it ever since. He's been killing ever since, man, since Cain. You see? But there's a, there's a visitation for this man. And now this man is... is, is, is striving against the Lord in efforts to, 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 to create this fourth industrial revolution, all right, which is all in vain. All right, because as we said in the beginning of the lesson through the Spirit, there's a sword bathed that's, that, that's going to be bathed in heaven for this man. All right, let's get this right here. Let's close our head through the Spirit. The book of Isaiah chapter 34. And I'm going to start from the top and it reads, Come near ye nations to hear and hearken. Ye people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the, the Salakia, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. Right? Listen, all everyone on the planet earth, listen up. For the indignation, right? The righteous anger of the Lord is upon all nations, man. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. And when you read, um, when you read 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, hey, it goes into how the chariots of the Lord, man. Man, these armies, these armies are gonna be eviscerated, man. These armies of the nations, man. They're gonna be, they're gonna be eviscerated, man. We'll go read about that. 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. You know, you can read about the war in heaven and revelations, right? Let's continue on. Isaiah 34 and 3. Their slain also should be cast out and their stank shall come up out of their carcasses 
and the mountain should be melted with their blood, man. Great slaughter, right? And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine. Salakia, so as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree, man. <laughs> you see? Man, the heavens should be rolled together as a scroll because the missiles, man. Hey, when the missiles hit, that is going to create that mushroom cloud effect. You see? And that cloud goes up, man. Higher than airplanes fly, man. After, man. <sighs> and these are the weapons of the Lord's indignation, man. Those missiles sitting in silos as I speak. You know, this is not a... um. This is not something like, oh, you know, it has to still come to pass. You know, man, listen, they're past the blueprint, the uh, <laughs> the blueprint phase. Hey, these things are created, sitting in silos with desig with uh, designated locations already inscripted. All they all, hey, all they got to do is activate and push a button. Destinations already locked and cocked and ready to go. You see, and when these things go, hey, there's no turning them back. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to be on these missiles, man. See? Scripture says, the arrow that he shooteth a shot and shall not miss, man, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the earth, which is what, what the ends of the earth is the west. This is where the sun goes down, man. This is the very ends of the earth. Right here in North America, Mystery Babylon the Great. And here's the point. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 5, and it reads, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. You see, and Idumia is the Greek and Latin way to say Edom. And if you read Genesis the 36th chapter, what's it say? I believe, what's that? Genesis 36 and, uh, and 1. What Esau is Edom. Or what's that? Well, one in, one in seven, I think it is. Uh, uh, Esau is Edom. You see? And we know Esau rests his hat right here in Babylon, man. This is where he throws his feet up and thrusts his wickedness out. You see? And upon the people of my curse. See? There, there, there goes that word curse again. To judgment. Okay, judgment is coming for these damn devils, man. And this is why they're trying so hard to pursue this agenda that's going to utterly fail, man. You know, they're going to utterly fail. But this is beautiful because, hey, again, as they continue to move pieces on the chess on the chessboard, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is moving a piece on the chessboard. And this devil is going to make one move. He's going to make one move, hey, and it's going to cost him. And it's only a matter of time. He's going to make that move. Because scripture said, who has resisted his will? That's Romans 9 too. Who has resisted the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah? Nobody. Nobody, man. Hey, this man is going to be moved out the way. His visitation is imminent, man. So we should be rejoicing, you know, <laughs> through the spirit as Akiyam and Akwa. We should be rejoicing in this and, and you know, and them talking about there's going to be a, uh, <clears throat> a, uh, a cyber attack and, you know, the, the grid's going to go down, famine, this, that, and the third, you know, and money's not looking good. Well, good, good uh, let's, 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 let's clap. Let's clap to that. You know, because all that means is that we're getting closer to the kingdom, man. And all these things must be turned upside down. It's the only way. It's the only way we're going home. So, hey, this is beautiful. We're living in beautiful yet dangerous times. Hey, but Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai preserves us, you know, all the way through. You know, we're able and we're able to see, okay, the judgment written. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. 
Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Kal Halaliam La Yahawa, Baha Shem Yahawa Shai, Baha Shem Rakak Shalom.